What's going on everyone? Thank you so much for watching today. My name is Savannah and as always, if you're new here, thanks so much for stopping by. We're back with some more Planet Zoo and today we're building a habitat for the warthogs. A little bit random, yes, but there's a story behind it. So obviously the new Africa pack came out a little over a week ago now. I think a little over a week ago. My time is all messed up. I've been so incredibly busy at work and at home. I barely know which day of the week it is anymore. <laughs> but anyways, it came out a little bit ago and I started building this habitat that you're seeing here. So the footage that you're seeing here was like basically the first time that I opened up the pack and was looking at all the new pieces. So I was trying to play with as many as possible and just kind of explore. That's why you see I have the uh, the Africa pack filter on because I only wanted to see the items that were coming with the game. And originally I was making this habitat for the meerkat because I really wanted to build for the meerkat first. I knew that I wanted to release a meerkat habitat on launch day. So I started building this and then I get probably about 90% done with it. And when I finally go to put the meerkats in game, because I didn't actually put them down for quite a while until I was done with this habitat. So I didn't really have an idea on scaling for the meerkat versus the habitat. Obviously you can see I put a keeper there, which is helping me keep scale for the people, for the guests, but I didn't put down the meerkat. So when I did put them down, they're so small. <laughs> They're so incredibly small. And when I was looking at the habitat, I was like, you know what? This really doesn't fit what I would think would look like a meerkat habitat. You guys might think otherwise. Um, please feel free to let me know. And, and this will be going on the workshop. So if it's not already, when I do eventually put it on there, because I'm so bad at remembering to do that, uh, you can very well use it for meerkats. I'm sure it would work just the same, but I eventually decided to build the meerkat habitat that you guys saw come out on launch day. Very, very happy with that one. But then I was kind of left after I did the meerkat habitat, after I I did the fennec fox habitat and I actually started a white rhino habitat that you'll be seeing very soon as well. I came back to this habitat and was like, you know what? I just, I really like it. I don't want to just scrap it. I don't want to get rid of it. So what can I possibly use it for? And for some reason, the warthogs popped into my head and I was like, you know what? That's kind of perfect. Let's throw like a little mud, mud bath thing, mud. What do you call those? Mud pit? Yeah, mud pit down, uh, let them wallow around in that, and we'll just make it for a warthog habitat. They're an African animal, right? So it kind of fits. So that's exactly what I did. So I actually think looking at this, it came out really, really well. I'm using here, as you can see, those new African painted log pieces probably one of my favorite pieces from the game. I love that they are uh, textured in a way where they have that like recolorable uh, paint on either end, but I also love that they're not perfectly straight. They look like a perfect weathered uh, zoo piece of wood that you would see, like making up fences, making up detailing, in this case, making up the roof. And I also love that because they're recolorable, if you color it all the same, then it's one solid color uh, on the entire beam and that it, it gets rid of that detailing. So I just think overall, it's a really versatile piece and I love using it. So I was really challenging myself to kind of use all or or as many of the new pieces as I possibly could in this build. So I think making the roof out of those pieces came out really, really well. So this is going to be what will eventually be when we, we get to the rest of the habitat. This will be like the inside area for the warthogs to hang out in, uh, their little like den area. Originally, like I said, building for the meerkats, I was gonna make it kind of like a, a tunnel-y thing, like with rocks and stuff inside, but it was too small for that. So it works really well for the warthogs hogs because we put down some of the bedding and they can go in there and have a nap or relax. Uh, the one thing that I didn't do though is I didn't actually use the one-way glass pieces. You can very easily switch those out because we do put glass pieces in the front of those two little openings that I left uh, open so that you can see the little warthogs when they're sleeping. 
Um, but I didn't use the one-way glass. I actually don't know if the warthogs get stressed or not. I didn't honestly play with them. I just kind of put them in there to take the end cinematics and then left the game uh, as I usually do. Starting on some fencing around the habitat. So if you guys are unaware, uh, although I am very bad at putting things on the workshop, this fence is the exception. I actually put together a few of the fences that I've created while creating some of these habitats. And I went ahead and uploaded those on the workshop for you guys. So they're called like African fence set or African fence pack or something like that. If you search simply Savannah or there's a link down below to the workshop, you can follow that and the, the fence is on there, including the plants in front. And then we do a little bit of a rock border in front as well. Um, really, really happy with how the fence came out. I really think it adds a good amount of detail and I love the color scheme of this one. Not a color scheme, that I normally play with. It's very warm, very uh, lots of yellowsy, orangey, tan kind of colors, right? So the green makes a really good contrast to that. And I will say in building in this like African biome, this I think it's technically like the African grassland biome, I think is this map. Um, it really gives a good contrast between like the sky and all the oranges and stuff. Um, orange and blue are two colors that actually really do go very well together. They're very aesthetically pleasing on the eye. It's not my favorite color combination. In fact, orange and blue is one of my least favorite color combinations. Uh, but according to color theory, they're one of the two or yeah, one of the pairs of colors that are supposed to go along really well. So maybe that's why the sky and the contrast contrast with uh, the green and all the yellows and stuff looks so good uh, when it's put together in a habitat like this because it's not true orange it's just lots of like orangey tones right I really wanted to use one of the new pathing sets, but because I was trying to make this as a workshop item, and I talked a little bit about this in one of my last videos or recent videos, um, it's really difficult to make blueprints for people that are easy to place down, that they don't have to fiddle too much with or worry about or anything like that. And pathing is one of them because pathing does not transfer over when you're making a habitat. Even if you do like a habitat blueprint or just a straight blueprint, it doesn't transfer over. So I put down the pathing, but then quickly took it away just so that I could put uh, my own custom pathing down. And that way, when you do download this as the workshop, you can run the pathing underneath it. And as long as you're getting it close to the edge of the habitat, it's going to work just fine for you. Um, and you don't have to worry about getting the pathing exactly right. Like if you do a build and you line the pathing perfectly, chances are the person that downloads it is not going to be able to get the path exactly where you wanted it. Um, and it'll look a little bit off or it'll just take them, you know, a really long time to get it in the right spot. Uh, so that's why we end up putting some of the like flat brick. Yeah, here we go. The flat brick pieces uh, down as the flooring. And again, I feel like this gave it a really nice contrast, uh, really went along with the color of the habitat, the color theme. So very, very happy with that. Fun fact about this habitat, it actually took me uh, not a long time. I finished this one in probably an hour and a half. I was just in a groove, uh, getting everything done, really was happy with how it was coming out and so really didn't have to fuss with a whole lot of it. So for that reason, uh, I originally just left it as the habitat, but you'll notice in the end cinematics as well as like the little beginning shot, there's a little seating area on the right hand side. Um, I actually added that and the surrounding details details because it didn't take me very long. So putting it together in a time lapse, it ended up it was going to be like a, a 12 minute video or something like that. And usually my videos are anywhere between 20 minutes and 30 minutes. And so I felt like, you know, I had some more time that I could spare to dedicate to this. I just didn't want to throw something together and get it out there just to get it out there. So I added a little bit of detailing around the side, which includes some planters, a little seating area, um, stuff like that. So I think it comes out really, really well and very happy with it overall. You can see I'm, I'm messing with the barriers at first here. I do end up switching that out for glass because again, going back to the
the whole making this for the workshop thing. I wanted to make sure it was easy to place down. So essentially all you have to do is take the habitat entrance, the habitat gate, put it where the little door is in the back, and then you can just run null pathing or, or not null pathing, I'm sorry, null barriers around the entire thing. It doesn't have to be precise. It doesn't have to be exact. As long as you've got null barriers around the entire thing, you don't have to worry about it because the warthogs themselves can't get over the custom made fences around the whole thing. And that's what I mean by making it really easy to download on the workshop, download and use. Uh, the one thing that I don't think will transfer over though in the the workshop blueprint so just in case you do download this is the poles that are detailed on the front of the little excuse me on the front of the little uh, house area because they're sunk so far into the ground because I used for whatever reason I used like the four meter ones instead of the one meter ones those ones probably will not transfer over so if you do want them there you might have to replace them um, I haven't actually double checked that or not but that's the one one problem too is that if you sink things super far into the ground so like a lot of my habitats use trees as bushes sink them too far to the ground they won't transfer over but I digress I talked about that a lot in the last episode um, but I'm trying to get more stuff on the workshop for you guys so that you guys can play with it and use it because I know there's a lot of players out there that do like doing that so I'm really really trying I'm really trying to make an effort <laughs> but just very simply uh, surrounding this with some rocks you guys know I love some rocks I've been playing Sims recently and uh, there's there's two little rocks in that game I don't I don't really know what to do uh, building houses doesn't really call for rocks. Uh, so I'm a little, I'm a little lost without my rocks and without my plants. Um, <laughs> but having a lot of fun with it anyway. Using these new tile pieces. I love these new tile pieces. I specifically love that they're all individually colorable, right? You can change the color of each individual tile on these like tile panels. Um, and I think that that is super useful. Uh, additionally, they came out with like a single tile version that's colorable and the potential for um, pixel art is very great. Uh, myself is not one of the people that can make something like that, but other people that are more creative and better than myself at that can. And so I'm very excited to see what people come up with. I've already seen a couple things, but yeah, it, uh, it lends itself really well to making pixel art because it's a nice little square recolorable piece that's flat and you don't have to flip it over like the switch and, and things like that or the switch piece rather. While we are getting the rest of the build out of the way, because we don't have too much longer in the time lapse, even though I did add on, this isn't a super, super long uh, video. So we've only got a few more minutes. Let's talk about our warthog friends. So warthogs are considered remarkable for their strength, their intelligence and flexibility. Um, unlike many of the other animals that they share their habitat with, many of the other animals that inhabit uh, the African continent, they are not endangered. And this is mostly because warthogs are very adaptable. And what we mean by that is like, for example, most warthogs like to forage during the early morning hours and the late evening hours. So they're considered crep crepuscular, which is uh, active in early morning and early evening. However, if they live in an area where people would naturally hunt them, in these hours, they would be at their most vulnerable. So these warthogs have changed their routine, their behavior to forage at night. So they're very adaptable in many ways, which allows them to kind of uh, mold to their environment and uh, out survive some other animals that might not be so adaptable. Lions, cheetahs, leopards, painted dogs, hyenas, and eagles are all predators of the warthog. The eagle is one that got me because it's not one that I uh, thought about off the top of my head, but it does make sense. Probably preying on young or uh, juvenile warthogs as they're a little bit smaller, right? Warthogs actually have longer legs than other members of the swine family, and this allows them to run extremely fast, escaping from those potential predators, and they can even reach up to uh, 34 miles an hour. It also says on here that they don't have the luxury of waking up very slowly, as when they wake up to leave their burrow in the morning, they must dash out at top speed just in case any potential predator is out there waiting for them. This would not be my favorite part about being a warthog. <laughs> Not that I've given a lot of thought to being a warthog. However, I am a very 
slow waking up person. I wake up, I check my phone, I lay in bed, I snooze on and off. Like I need like an hour to be coherent, to get out of bed, to actually wake up. So if I had to like wake up and like sprint to save my life, just dead. I'd, I'd just be dead. I wouldn't survive. <laughs> so it's, it's probably a good thing that I'm not a warthog. Besides being good at dodging and running, warthogs are also not afraid to fight. Uh, this is a little bit of a difference from some other animals because a lot of animals are either made to fight or to run. Uh, these guys are made for both. So they have really sharp lower canines. They're actually their teeth, which are sticking straight out from their mouth. They look like little tusks uh, and that's what they use as weapons. And I, this makes me laugh. It also says that they, they use them as weapons but they squeal at the top of their lungs at the same time when they're fighting. <laughs> And I just think that's so funny, <laughs> imagining them like squealing at the top of their lungs while fighting. It doesn't seem very, um, it doesn't seem very macho, very um, dominant or assertive, but that's what they do. Uh, when they walk, their tails hang down, but when they run, their tails stick straight up in the air with that little bushy part dangling down. Um, this is probably just a warning to other warthogs in the area that danger is coming, but it also makes them look kind of silly. Kind of like when the meerkats run around, they run with their tails straight straight up. Very, very cute, by the way. Uh, but yeah, so they run with their tails straight up in the air. Warthogs live in Africa's southern Sudan and southwestern Ethiopia in the savanna, woodland, and grasslands. And they're not picky about their homes at all. In fact, one thing that I actually... I think I knew, but I didn't really think about is that they oftentimes sleep and hide in burrows. However, they don't make their own burrows. They can, they can dig a little bit. It's part of what their tusks are for, but they like to take over the burrows of other animals. Specifically, actually this lists aardvarks. So uh, aardvark habitats, heart, aardvark habitats, aardvark burrows that they're not using anymore, uh, the warthogs will, will use, and it also keeps them cool from extreme desert temperatures like we were talking about with the fennec fox. Anywhere underground, uh, safe from the sun, is going to stay a very mild temperature both at, at night and in the morning or during the day. Um, so that's, that will help them stay away from the heat as well. Uh, moving on to a little bit about their family life, warthog females are called sows, are much more social than the males, which are called boars. They stay in groups of up to 40 with their young that are called piglets. The sows communicate with all sorts of grunts, chirps, growls, snorts, and squeals. These vocalizations can be greetings, threats, and warnings, among other things. The sows also like to rest close together and even groom each other from occasion. The last thing that we would normally talk about with our animal friends would be their conservation status. However, because the warthogs are stable in their wild habitat, there's not too much information I have for you. So as we finish up the build, I'll just kind of talk about the last things that we are wrapping up here. This other fence that you see me putting down here that's surrounding the little eating area, that's another fence that's part of the fence pack that is out on the workshop if you want to download that. But really, honestly, we're only putting a few more little bits of foliage, a few more little bits of plants and things like that around just to make it look nice and done and planted. I'm really liking the more minimal look of plants recently, where like when I first started playing Planet Zoo and building habitats, I felt the need to cover every single part of the ground with a plant so that you like couldn't see the mulch or couldn't see the dirt like it needed to be all really overgrown but I'm really liking the look of like purposefully planted plants if that makes sense like like real landscaping pulling out a really old workshop item that I have are these signs um, just to kind of put them down and around as if they were like information on the plants. Many, many zoos will have stuff like this where as you walk around, there's information on the plants that you're seeing as you're walking by them. Not many people stop to read them. I'm one of the people that stops to read them, but making sure that we have those in the zoo just adds a little bit more of a realistic touch. 
there's not too much left in the video. So I do want to let you know that I have some more keys to give away for the Africa pack. If you are interested in winning one, the post for this video, the one that promotes it, letting you know like, hey, the video went live over on my Twitter. If you go to my Twitter, that's where the next uh, giveaway is going to be. So what you need to do is head over to my Twitter, make sure you're following me, and then just leave a comment on my announcement post for this video. So it'll say something like, today we're building for warthogs, you know, go check it out. It'll have the link of the YouTube video and everything. It'll be probably the most recent post on my Twitter if you're catching this right when it goes live. But just literally all you got to do is go to my Twitter, make sure you're following me and leave a comment on that post. I'll put a little bit of something in the post as well, possibly just to let you guys know. After about 24 hours, I will pick one of those comments and that that person will be the winner. I will be reaching out to you via DM. If you're watching this video probably after, like anytime in July, it means the giveaway is already done. Because again, after this video goes live, I'll wait about 24 hours, wait for all those comments to come in, and then I'll pick one person to win the code. Um, but yeah, I want to give away one more little code for you guys. So if you haven't gotten your hands on it yet, this is such a fantastic pack and I'm having so much fun with it. I'm so excited to give away another code for it. But yeah, guys, that's all I have for you today. There's only just a few more seconds. We're adding some very last minute details to this build and then we're all done. Very plain, very simple, quick, easy habitat. Really had a lot of fun with this one. If you did enjoy, please do remember to leave a like. It helps me out so, so much. Leave a comment. Let me know uh, what you think, what you think you'd like to see next. Anything, if you're having a good day. Fun fact about warthogs. I always I love hearing facts about the animals. So if you know something uh, that we didn't talk about here on the video, feel free to leave that down below. And until next time, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye! Um...